Hey there everybody, Joe here. Thanks for tuning in again. So this week on my Leviathan painting, I was working mostly on the water. I feel like I'm always developing my technique for water more and more because I never feel like I've reached mastery. You know, I'm, I'm always looking for a better way to do it. I was putting these more spiky waves in the picture because I want it to feel like the water's really getting churned up and I didn't like the look of the more level water. I used a little bit different technique than what I've done in a lot of other paintings. I was using a wet on wet technique, so I'm putting the base coat of the real dark, almost blackish blue on there. And I did that color with these colors here, just this is black, magenta, and blue, like a phthalo blue. Sharon Williams paint, that's what I like to use on my bigger paintings, my murals, is this acrylic wall paint. It's, it moves around real quick, allows me to work faster. I like it for big paintings. I was using a mix of white and magenta. So it's, it's like a, a very light pink to do the reflection because once that mixes with that deep blackish blue, the pink hue goes away and it leaves more of a natural violet looking reflection. Doing it wet on wet and keeping the paint heavy, I was able to do the reflection and then come back and blend just the base of each little wave that was spiking up. And I would blend that base down into the lighter reflection color that was beneath it. When I do that technique of doing that reflection on the water, I focus on doing those kind of smile shapes that are just a stroke of the brush with the light reflection color. The space left in between creates that kind of pyramid shape that's the faces of the waves. So then once I have some of those shapes showing, then I was coming back while the paint was still wet and leveling that base out, just dragging the brush back and forth across the base of it where it connects to the lighter reflection under it. It was allowing me to soften the look. Maybe it could be a more realistic look if I was spending more time on the details. I mean, I still was doing this kind of quickly, so I'm undecided if it, if it really makes for a better look than the wet on dry, I, I don't know. I like to always try to to improve the technique. I, I feel like that one could achieve more of a realistic feel if that's what I was going for. I would blend over the whole thing real quickly with the large brush, just very lightly blending it so the image was still there and not destroyed, but just softened. And then I would soften those lower areas. A lot of the time when people are having trouble with their waves, I notice that the base of the wave is not very level and it causes the water not to look like a level surface. So you can see on all of my waves, I've leveled the underside of each triangle by just dragging the brush across like I was saying, so that while it spikes up on the top, the base just has a very slight curve to it, if not just level, so that it looks like it's rising up out of that water. That's just kind of the natural shape that occurs when you see these kinds of waves on water. The other water, element that I got into in this picture was doing the splashing white water like on his foot and up here on this flipper. If you stopped it with a high-speed camera, what would it look like? Where you can even see the details of the stuff that's in motion. Water that is splashing, you can create by first, under just like the waves, understanding the shape of it and then understanding what the light does. So I'll explain those two things. The shape of it, imagine some stretchy object and you pull it apart well like a piece of gum you know how it gets real skinny when you pull it apart water does that too but it breaks into two pieces before it stretches out into a long strand it's easy to explain that shape on the whiteboard when you put one substance in another substance like water and air or air and water it doesn't come from far away and collect it scatters apart you know uh, things tend toward disorder so we have water pulling apart, which makes for flatter, skinnier shapes. That's my point in saying all that. So, the, you know, maybe you have a few that aren't long and skinny like that. Maybe they pull out and are starting to move to that shape, but are not quite there yet. Others, are, you know, they get real long and skinny and just have maybe just barely a little bit of a round kind of ball shape on the end. And then the piece that broke off will usually be out here somewhere. You know, so this is how you make a splatter. It's a good demonstration of how the points want to pull off and leave larger space in between that's kind of connecting. So you have these larger rounded areas that are in between all of these points that are getting stretched off of this thing. It's not like this. The parts that are splattering out 
are skinny, the parts that are staying with the original clump are large. This is not a kind of a shape that you would see in water that's getting pulled and pushed apart. I want to represent a shape that has a main body and then has strands coming off of it. Right, so now let's do it in perspective. Let's say that I've got a shape and I'm gonna put a few little splatters coming off of it. For the same reason that on a single strand you have this kind of bead at the end, all around the edge is fatter than the stretched out material that's toward the middle. I'm using these lines just to represent kind of a lip that goes around that. And then you might have more than one you know, since this is not just a flat shape, you know, you might have a, another shape coming off of it like this too, you know, and, and then have more of a complex three-dimensional shape, but the same kind of pattern where this is a large shape that's curving in toward the main body. This is a small shape that's making a strand coming off of the main body. Then I can make all these splashing little beads. So if you can kind of get this pattern uh, in your mind as you're creating little splashing water pieces, it, even if you don't want to go to the great lengths that I try to do to individually make those kinds of shapes, then you might still benefit from just kind of understanding the way that moves because when you're making white water like this right here that's tumbling over next to this big fin, it helps me to have more of a three-dimensional understanding of the shape. I, I know that there's going to be a lot of round beads that are out on the end of that splashing water, you know, because of the, the nature of the movement where strands stretch away from the main body and then for whatever reason the surface tension perhaps, you, there's more water collected on the very ends of those pulling, pulling strands that are coming off of that main body. So I'd have more of my round colored beads that are going to capture more reflection. And that's where it's really going to make a difference in my painting. So on my painting, I have something like this, where the white water is tumbling over this way. And, and this is my wave here. And so you can see that I have all of these little beads of water. So the way I color that is by putting the brightest white on the underside of every rounded edge, every bead or every edge of one of those shapes like I drew. You know, on, on rather just a bead of water, this is going to be the bright spot because that's where the most light is reflected. If you are under a swimming pool and you're looking up at the surface, you see something that looks almost metallic on that surface because that surface is so reflective. So there's more reflection bouncing off of the air than there is bouncing off of the water. If you were looking at it from, from the air perspective, you, you would not see quite as much reflection. So you end up with a lot of reflection on that underside. And the reason that's helpful is because when I'm making a water-like shape, all of this edge here is where my white's gonna go, this underside, because the light is coming and bouncing off of the air and that's the part that shows the most reflection. So on all of my water and my painting, I put the white not on the top side where the light is hitting, but on the underside of the water, which is the top side of the air. But, <laughs> you know, it's the same reason that on my wave, there's that white, it's, it's like a big tube shaped bubble underneath the wave. It's, it's for the same reason. Okay, so in understanding that, well, since the, it reflects the light on the underside, well then you can expect it to reflect the, the ground and usually darker colors on the top side. So I can just use that as kind of a, a cheat code, <laughs> for lack of a better description, even if it's not accurate to the exact environment or exactly what would happen. It makes for some believable looking water when I do that. So on all my little splashes coming off of his foot, and all of these. It was really hard to do the dark line on the top side. You can see that a little bit on the splashing from the foot, but not so much up here because I have a really dark background already. So you don't see a lot of the dark on the top, but it's a cool effect when you're able to show both of those things. If nothing else, I like it uh, just for the challenge of imagining something in motion and trying to illustrate the, the way it looks as it's moving apart. 
All right, enough of that. Let's look at some comments from last week. Smoanova says, I like it most that a German guy, like me with sixth grade English, is able to understand everything you say. Good people are able to explain difficult things with easy words. Big up. Hey, all right, thanks. That is a, uh, a really nice compliment, and I also very much appreciate when somebody really makes an effort to explain something in my vocabulary. So I, I do try to do that. I appreciate you pointing that out. Simple vocabulary is the only vocabulary that I have. Oh man, I just dipped my arm in paint. Look at that. Kieran Hunter says, Thanks, Joe. I used your water surface videos in my paintings. All right, that's good to hear. I'm glad there are good people like you. A, hey, you guys got to stop calling me a good person. You who take the time to teach others. All right, thank you very much for that compliment. I don't like being called a good, a good guy just because I'm doing what I love. If you ever have the good fortune to do what you love for a, a living, then then you'll know that that is a tremendous reward and you, you kind of start to feel bad if people give you too many compliments because really you just get to show off all the time and it's i mean i love my job it really is good and you guys make it so worthwhile i it it wouldn't be the same without being able to show off for all of you who watch my videos i do appreciate that very much the art worker says my videos are evolving uh, so I guess that's true. You know, we've definitely tried different formats over the years. By the way, I do like your crazy blonde hairstyle in early videos. <laughs> yeah, I did. I was really into coloring my hair some time ago. I guess I'm getting a bit old to be that adventurous with my hair, but maybe I'll try it again someday. I had dreadlocks. I used to have dreadlocks. Cesar de Ortega. Can I get the link of the brushes you're using, please? I like your amazing work, man. Thank you very much for that nice compliment. And the uh, brushes that I use are like the cheapest brushes ever. I was never into buying expensive brushes because I guess just the path that I've taken was a lot more centered on where to put the paint in order to achieve the look that I wanted. These brushes, uh, just a couple bucks each, and they taper to a very sharp uh, knife-like point just because they have tapered bristles. So I can make really skinny lines uh, when it's this way, but then when I turn it this way, I can make wider lines. This one has an angled cut, but for this whole painting, I think I've used the square cut. So uh, anywhere you can find a brush that's that shape, that's the kind of brush that I would use. Claude says, I think you should enter a duck stamp contest. Your skill at recreating that which God created is superb. Hey, I do think of it in that way, that I'm just illustrating what I've seen, what God already did best. So for me, that gives me a good perspective in my place. I don't think that I should invest a lot of energy in trying to be a great creative mind because he's already created everything better than I ever could. So I like reproducing it in order to celebrate, I guess, so to speak, what I see and just the satisfaction of seeing that that can help others who are looking for answers is a huge thrill to me. So thanks for pointing that out. You know, God created it first. Jing Bei says, Hey Joe, your explanations are great as always, but I have a question about your previous video. Would you mind posting a slow, normal speed version of actually painting fire? Just, you know, to see how exactly you make it with actual paint. Hey, I'll work on that. I'll see if I can get that real-time footage up. Toby Fox says, love where this is going, Joe. I think, though, that you've made the torso of the man closest to us too long. And shouldn't there be reflections of the fire on the water and the wet sand? Too long. Maybe. Reflections of the... S Fire on the way. yeah, yeah, there should be. All right, you've given me some stuff to work on. Her talk von Berkshire says, Mural Joe, I've been wondering about waves and watercolor ever since your waves tutorial. So watercolor, it's, it's hard. You can't exactly do those same techniques doing light on dark because you start with white paper and you add the layers of color. I would just get accustomed to what those triangle shapes look like instead because that's the dark color is is the space in between the reflection strokes that I normally do. So I, I would do triangles that tapered out. They would blend out into the white. And, and I think since it's watercolor, 
I would, you know, do a few triangles by dragging my square brush at an angle. You know, if you take a square brush, you drag it this way with just this point, you can actually make triangle shapes and, and you just kind of rotate the brush a little bit. You see what I mean? If you try it, you know, you just get that square edge and get a little bit of a triangle shape. Well, once those are on a wet surface, I think you could just blend the bottom edges, kind of like I was describing I was trying to do with this while it's all still wet. Now, I'm not saying it would be easy. I think watercolor is definitely a very difficult medium, especially to achieve very realistic looks. But that would be my approach, my initial approach. I'm gonna have to try that sometime. All right, cool, nice encouragement from Deb Ross. Thanks for sharing your talents with us. Your explanation on perspective has really helped. I've been painting 20 years, and I finally have an explanation that has hit the spot. Thanks, and hi from Australia. All right, cool. Thanks for the shout out from Australia. It's always exciting to hear about where else in the world my videos are getting viewed. That's super cool. Taz <laughs> says, the PBS show might be Gather Round. Well, I did look on YouTube. I searched that title, Gather Round, and John Robbins. That is the guy. That's the guy I used to love watching in elementary school, drawing with charcoal or, or chalk or whatever he does. Man, he's like, I, I'd put that guy second to Bob Ross, people who inspired me, just because when I was a kid, I was so mesmerized by the storytelling along with the drawing. It was really cool. So, hey, thanks for that. I want to thank you again for watching, and if you want to pledge a dollar a month on Patreon, it's a big help to us making the free videos on YouTube. We put a free video once a month there on Patreon just to say thank you. Also, my site, learn.muraljoe.com, is where you can purchase videos that I've made that are a little more lengthy and more extensive explanations, how to paint a landscape, how to paint a beach wave. There's different things on there. You can check that out if you're interested, and I appreciate you guys tuning in. We'll see you next time.